Um, we're being asked to count the birds in our gardens or from our balconies this weekend. Yeah, it's a bit of joy, really. It's part of an annual survey by the RSPB with most of us locked down at home, there may be an even bigger response than usual. Now, John McGuire can tell us all about this because he's in the garden um, with the birds. And we tried to get sound effects, John, just in case there are no birds around you. Good morning, sir. Morning, Naga. There are lots of birds around. Sometimes you, you know, you're deafened by the cacophony of the dawn chorus, aren't you? I can hear some birds as a little robin tweeting just behind me. But the more you look, the more you see. I just noticed there's a nest up in that tree there, actually. Now the leaves are on that birch tree. I could see an abandoned nest that'll obviously hopefully come into use once again in the spring. If you put food out, the birds will come. It's almost a given. Lots of peanuts there. Looks absolutely delicious. And a bird box as well. This garden, Mark Glanville, who we'll meet in just a few minutes' time, Mark was telling me he's seen 21 different species of birds so far this year. Can you imagine if you managed to tick those off and send that back to the RSPB this weekend? They'd be absolutely delighted. I must say, though, there's been a buzzard circling overhead, so perhaps it's put some of the smaller birds off from visiting the garden this morning. The idea, then, to spend a little bit of time just quieting down and observe the birds outside your window, in your garden, or whatever. I mean, let's face it, what else have you got on this weekend? If ever there was a perfect activity for lockdown... The RSPB's Big Garden Bird Watch has to be it. People are looking for activities to do, and this is a really lovely one to do. You know, whether you're going to do it on your own or whether you're going to line up the family at the window, and we love to do it as a family, don't we? It's a really, it's, you know, it's an activity that we always look forward to doing. Even more so, we're all realising now how valuable nature is for our mental health and well-being. You know, many more people are out and about just enjoying nature and and. You know what it can give to us. For Miranda's son, Oliver, the simple act of looking out of the window can be a welcome break from a computer screen in between virtual lessons. When I can, I try and um, get some exercise, just in a break time, five minutes between a lesson, come downstairs um, and just see, see what's happening really. This time of the year, um, quite commonly on the ground, there's a robin uh, and they have a lovely song. Uh, so I quite enjoy seeing those at break time or at lunch time or something. Despite the name, this isn't just about gardens. The RSPB wants to involve anyone and everyone who can spot birds through a window, from a nearby park, or even just on a bird feeder or a tree. There's no need for a garden in this case, OK? If you're lucky enough, uh, as I am, to have a little balcony space, you can definitely set up some bird feeders here. Nadine Pereira is one of the founders of Flock Together. Our primary focus is to combat the underrepresentation of people of colour in the natural world. I don't have a garden. I'm fortunate enough at the top of my road, I do have the Hackney Marshes uh, where we are today, so I can walk all of five minutes. But it's even as simple as uh, looking through your window. If you can manage to spot some birds there, go for it, you know. Just spend a couple of uh, minutes, half an hour or so, looking out the window, seeing what you can see, and you might well surprise yourself. And you don't need a fancy pair of binoculars or anything either. Um, all you need is a pair of eyes, really. Maya Rose Craig was the youngest person to spot half of the world's bird species. She's passionate about wildlife and persuading people that you don't have to be an expert to enjoy what's on your doorstep. The great thing about birds is how easy they are, um, and they're everywhere. So if you do stick some food out, um, you can stick out some sunflower seeds, stick out some peanuts, you will almost certainly get birds turning up. And it's that separation from daily life that I think is so important and so, so appealing for everyone that's getting involved at the moment. Today, Maya's launching a podcast with her first guest, the wildlife presenter, Chris Packham. And I found more simple, commonplace, everyday things on my doorstep that I basically hadn't seen in those you know, 15 years, and, and I enjoyed them more than ever. And just to prove you're never too young, Seven-year-old Ellie May took this shot of a robin. Last year, the Birdwatch saw half a million people take part, recording eight million sightings. It's a massive citizen science project which provides an unrivaled amount of data, then allowing the RSPB to understand which birds are thriving, surviving, or under threat. It's an hour where we can feel we're leaving the lockdown world and connecting with the natural world.
back in the garden at Mark Glanville's garden. Mark, we were just going to try and persuade Rob the Robin to come down and feed off your hand, wasn't he? Which he normally does, uh, but he wasn't playing ball. No, uh, morning, Joy. No, he, um, the wagtail, I've got a couple of tame white wagtails. Uh, they're not top birds, and uh, one of them's just come down and scared him away, so he's <laughs> dropped back into the bushes at the moment. He'll be out later on, but the wagtails, they're, um, they're top birds. I think you filmed a little bit of us, or, or Jane filmed a little bit of it for us yesterday, so if you've got a chance to play that while we're chatting, we will, because that's great to see. Uh, as I was saying earlier, the way that the bird magnet is to get food in your garden, so give us a few tips, Mark, on what will attract birds into your garden or, or onto your balcony or whatever. Yeah, basically, um, try and have a variety of different sorts of food. So, uh, sunflower hearts, uh, peanuts, fat balls, um, live mealworms, uh, try and have a, a mixture and then put them all at different places around the garden that will bring the birds in. Because I was saying earlier, 21 different species you've seen so far just this year, is that right? Since January the 1st, 21. Um, uh, I suppose one of my favourite at the moment, I, we've got a migrant, we've got a, a, a black cat, probably from Germany or Poland, um, it's come over here for the winter uh, and seems to think those two feeders are his <laughs> and it drives every other bird away. But the blue tits are a bit crafty because one blue tit will come in, the black cat will come out, chase it away, and the other blue tit will whip in, nick a peanut and shoot off. I think we take the pictures now of you, Mark, feeding Rob the Robin yesterday. We, of course, know you best for swifts, and normally when we're here, and Charlie, you may remember we've been in this garden before in the spring, it's normally absolutely glorious. You have your swift boxes underneath the eaves. The swifts, of course, will come in the summer. Uh, but when do we expect to see them back? Uh, I normally get my first swift about the uh, last week in April, yeah. and I've got 25 boxes around the house, of which about 18 or 19 are occupied. And I'll tell you something, on a summer's evening, when you get 30 swifts screaming around your house, it's a, it's a sight to behold. It's a spectacular sight. I've even had, I've even had some neighbours come up and say to me, are those your birds? And I said, yeah. He said, they're fantastic. We've been watching them for hours in the back garden. A free display. Well done. Thank you very much indeed, Mark. Great to see you this morning. Uh, thank you for sending us your pictures, by the way. Let, let us show you some of the ones that folk have been sending in. This one from Mark, from Mike in Essex uh, captured a shot of a lesser red pole, which I think is probably uh, quite, a, qu quite a good bird to spot. Uh, this is Lee in County Antrim who got a shot of a robin. He said the robin had followed him around in a, in a, in a local woodland for an eight-kilometre walk. So it's, not, it's lovely, isn't it, when a little robin will come and follow you around. This is Chris, uh, who took a shot of a sparrow. You can just see it, I think, in the bottom right-hand corner of the frame there. He's, uh, the, the sparrow's been using fur from Chinook, which is a, a huge dog, by all accounts, to, uh, to, 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 uh, to feather its nest, as it were. And finally, Carol in Berkshire, got this shot of a parakeet, whether or not it was one of the ones apparently brought over by Jimi Hendrix. So the rumour goes, who knows? Anyway, Big Garden Bird Watch today, tomorrow. Oh, look, there's Rob. Gary, just get a shot of Rob. He's, oh, he's just gone. <laughs> That's live TV for you. Just missed it. Uh, must plug Mark's Garden. Hopefully be open later in the summer to raise money for charity. You know, maybe people will be able to come and enjoy it once again. Typical, isn't it? Well, no, we haven't seen a single bird, John. Not a single bird, <laughs> John. All that time, not a single Just bird. Well, and what I'll say is shout out to Gary for trying to get the bird as well. Always good to have good reactions, quick reactions. Um, let's see if it's bird watching.